Later today, you can gather with people to talk about death with coffee and cookies. The Death Cafe sessions happen once a month at the Beaconsfield Library. Everyone is welcome to come and chat about death. The goal is to create a group-led discussion rather than a grief uh, support or counseling session. Joining us now is Rebecca Vigeant. She is the facilitator at the Death Cafe. Rebecca Vigeant, good morning. Welcome to Daybreak. Good morning. Thanks for having me. What made you want to start these Death Cafe sessions? Well, the biggest reason why I wanted to start them was to give people a space to be able to talk about death without there being any political or religious agenda or influence whatsoever, since it's something that we literally all face at some point in our lives. It's important to have a safe space to be able to talk about our thoughts and feelings around death. Why do you think people are reluctant to talk about death or, why, or that it's such a touchy subject? I think for a lot of people, talking about death means having to face their own mortality. It also means potentially stirring up other people's thoughts and feelings around death, which you never really know what grief someone else is carrying or what fears they might be holding around death. And it can really be a, a tricky topic to broach for yourself and for other people's comfort, too. And how do you hope Death Cafe changes that? Well, it's all in the name. The fact that we put death right in the name, Death Cafe, it's to remove the taboo around death. Again, it's something we all face. We know people who die. We all die at some point. And to remove the taboo around it and make it socially acceptable to talk about death, not in a morbid way, but just in a way that's human and natural, I think that would relieve a lot of people's fear and stress and anxiety around death, which can only do good for people. And how do you handle those discussions? Well, it's a group-led discussion. So the way to do it is really just to open the floor for people to talk about whatever they want to talk about, gently keep the discussion on the topic of death, and um, you know, just try to keep the conversation going. But you'd be surprised. There's actually a lot, a lot to talk about when we start opening the door to the topic of death. How long do the sessions go on for? They go on for just under two hours. Okay. The last 15 minutes is a, is a bit of a wrap-up, and the first 15 minutes is more of an introduction. So all in all, it's about an hour and a half. Okay. And who comes to these sessions? Actually, you'll, you'll be surprised again. People of all ages, and I've had people ask if they could bring their children. I haven't had children yet, but that is acceptable if it's something people are interested in. But something that I found is it's younger people who want to talk about it or maybe interested in researching the field, older people who are thinking of their own mortality, and pretty much everything in between. Do you see a difference in how in, in comfort level in talking about death, for example, or, or, or is one age group more comfortable approaching the idea of death than another group not so much? I think that in every age group the same taboos exist. Um, but I do think that older people are more willing to talk about death um, and their experiences around it, people that they've lost, their thoughts, their feelings, and their wisdom. They definitely have lots of wisdom to share. And I know you said you haven't had a lot of children yet, but if you did have a child or, or come into you, one of your sessions, how would you handle the conversation or adapt the conversation? Well, my background is in early childhood education, okay. so I, I would be excited if a child did show up. Um, I would just make it really, really clear that the topic will be about death, so just so the parents know exactly what to expect. I would lay out some ground rules, just kind of make sure there's no swearing and we keep the topics appropriate. Right. And we always have resources available, um, like library books and printouts and stuff like that, if people are interested in more information. So um, I would make sure to have some materials there for children as well. I think children also have some very deep, deep wisdom and insight to share. Mm -hmm. oh, with the pandemic, death is something that a lot of us have, have had to think about. Why do you think this is a good time to have these death cafe sessions? Well, this is the first in-person death cafe in Montreal since COVID started. Um, there used to be some, like, downtown, but they had to close down. And I think a lot of people are interested in, one, just some social events. So it's a completely free social event that you can go to. And, two, a lot of people were forced, some sometimes a bit more aggressively, to face their mortality and to start to talk to themselves about the topic of death. So it can be really 
um, soothing and comforting to be able to talk about these things out loud with no pressure, no stress whatsoever with some other people, for sure. Yeah, and we want to be clear, this is not a counseling session, but a group discussion. So what is it like to facilitate those conversations with that in mind? Well, laying down the uh, kind of boundaries early on, I think people are pretty good at respecting it and um, making sure not to kind of trauma dump or grief dump. If that were to happen, again, we have some like uh, resources there where people can find some um, grief counseling groups if that's what they're looking for. But with the ground rules there and the boundaries in place, people are pretty respectful of it and you really just end up with super interesting conversations that are about death, you know, questions around ethics, questions around, um, you know, what to expect in the future, around how humanity handles death and stuff like that. Uh, there's actually a large part of the conversation that has little to do with grief whatsoever. Oh, okay. In, in what way? Well, just in the fact that, um, you know, as you're getting older, you might have to write your will. That's a whole topic of conversation entirely. Um, we talked a lot about things like cryogenics, you know, would, would that be something you'd be interested in preserving your body to maybe go into a future where they slow down death or like eliminate death altogether? Would it be ethical to eliminate death altogether? Do animals think about their death? Do bugs think about it? Just stuff like that. It's actually super interesting conversation, right. but you couldn't have that conversation with someone in a grocery store. No, no, definitely not. Is there any humor <laughs> in, in, involved in, in those sessions? A lot of humor. It's a surprisingly lighthearted conversation, um, especially because everyone is there with the same intention, the same focus. So we're able to approach a really heavy, dark, somewhat morbid topic with some real lightheartedness and just like raw humanity. Right. And as you said, it, it does come to a point where someone would need resources, that there is a place or there's a way to refer that person to resources or to help them seek professional help. Yes, so we have a list of grief support groups and um, associations throughout Montreal that can provide therapy or support if needed. And the library also does a really good job of putting out some super interesting books about the topic of death in general, but grief as well. Do you have any advice for people who want to initiate their own conversations around death? Yes. So if you're interested in starting a death cafe or finding out more about it, you can go to the death cafe website, deathcafe.com or deathcafe.org. Um, it's, it's an organization that's set up where anyone can start a death cafe. There's some pretty loose guidelines to follow, but it's all laid out on the website. As for your event, it happens once a month at the Beaconsfield Library. Is that where people would go if they want to sign up or get more information? If you want to get more information, you can definitely contact the Beaconsfield Library. Mm -hmm. You can also go on their website, um, mm -hmm. and you can also find the event on the Death Cafe website itself. If you just search Death Cafe Montreal on the Death Cafe website, you should find it. Rebecca Vigeon, thanks for coming on and telling us about this. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. That is Rebecca Vigeon, facilitator at the Deaf Cafe. The Deaf Cafe sessions happen once a month at the Beaconsfield Library, as she said. There's one this evening, 6 p.m. You can go to the Deaf Cafe's website or you can call the Beaconsfield Library for more information.